An unexpected loss of electrical power, a blackout, is a very unusual event, particularly for anyone down in the engine room, and particularly if you've never experienced it before. It suddenly becomes very dark and relatively quiet, although some auxiliary diesel engines might still be running. Technology should guard us from such events. We have power management systems (PMS), preferential tripping of non-essential machinery, and we often have sequential start systems to help us get going again automatically. However, there is a danger that we might have become so used to the system taking care of us automatically that we've become unfamiliar with how to recover from a blackout. When a blackout occurs, stay calm and reach for the procedures. Remember that the emergency generator should start and give you essential services back within 45 seconds. In the meantime, batteries should keep your alarm and monitoring systems working. As soon as you can, inform the officer of the watch on the bridge of the general situation, giving as much accurate information as you can. If the engineer's alarm has not already sounded, operate it now and call the chief engineer. Always remembering that they might well be on their way to the engine room by now. In most cases, loss of electrically driven lubricating oil, fresh water, and seawater pumps will have stopped the main engine. But bring the control lever back to zero anyway, ready for an orderly restart. If the auxiliary boiler was running, shut the main steam stop valve to maintain the steam pressure. Once manpower is available, it might be a good idea to close off the steam to non-essential services such as tank heating, etc. This will make it quicker to re-establish steam to the fuel oil heaters necessary to restore electrical generation and propulsion. Try and make sure everyone logs such actions so that everything can be restored to normal later on. Obviously, we should try and find out the reason for the blackout, and there might be some evidence of this in the data logger. Find out the reason for the blackout and fix it if you can, or isolate any defective equipment that caused the blackout. By now, reading this list, you should be thinking that a there's a lot to do, and b. We need to go about it in an organized fashion, so you really need to work from procedures, and there should be management of the situation with specific tasks delegated to individuals. Now we can think about restoring power. Let's go back to basics. In order to do this, as a minimum, we'll need starting air, fuel, and to prime the lubricating system of the diesel engine driving the main generator. Now a lot depends on what ship you're on and what situation you're in. In a blackout, the fuel oil feed might only be via gravity from a pencil tank. The cooling water pumps might be driven by electrical motors, in which case you need power, and maybe only particular ones can be fed from the emergency switchboard. The emergency generator might give you all the power you need to start a main generator. But then you might only have a limited amount of time to start seawater and freshwater pumps necessary to provide cooling for this main generator. There are so many variables that the only way to ensure that this is all done in the correct sequence is to develop a procedure beforehand, have it ready for emergencies, and use it. So know which main generator can be started in a blackout and how to do this. Consider if you can still start them on heavy fuel oil, because you may or may not have enough residual heat and steam to do this. Change over to distillate fuel if in doubt. Once you get it started, restore power to the main switchboard, and make sure you start any additional cooling pumps needed before it overheats. And get the boiler going again to restore steam. Get the lubricating oil and fresh water pumps running on the main engine as soon as you can, and get the main engine fuel oil system back into operation. Keep an eye on the load on this main generator you've just started, and start another main generator if needed. Keep the bridge updated on progress. You should have a better idea of when normal service will be resumed by now. We need to keep in mind that on most but not all ships. 
We can't run the main and emergency generators in parallel. We can often synchronize them, but there are usually two circuit breakers, arranged so that only one of them can be closed at any given time. This means we can feed the emergency switchboard either from the main switchboard or the emergency generator. What we can't normally do is backfeed the main switchboard from the emergency generator. So now we will usually be in a situation where we have the emergency switchboard fed by the emergency generator and the main switchboard fed by the main generator. However, the two are not connected. Keep this in mind. At some point, we need to reconnect the main and emergency switchboards, which means to restore the feed to the emergency switchboard from the main switchboard. Of course, we should be used to this routine from testing the emergency generator on load every week. If we can synchronize them, great. If we can't, then keep in mind that there might be a momentary loss of supplies to anything fed from the emergency switchboard. So know what this affects since it could potentially cause another blackout. For instance, if it is supplying power to the main generator fuel pump. Essential navigation equipment is normally kept supplied using individual uninterruptible power supplies, UPS, during this changeover. So, make sure that you don't forget to restore the feed from the main switchboard to the emergency switchboard and to stop the emergency generator. There have been many occasions after a blackout where the emergency generator has been left running. Make sure all controls are set back to the auto position, ready for the next time. Now that we have enough power, reset breakers and start all the other required machinery and systems. For example, tank heating. This includes breakers in the preferential tripping sequence, non-essential machinery. With modern power management systems, an unexpected loss of power is less common than it once was. But that is exactly why it might catch us unprepared if we do nothing. So use this learning session to think about your own ship. There are bound to be differences with the general procedures described here. Have a look at your own procedures, check that you understand them and review them to make sure they are up to date.